Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the high grade Zaku 2 F-Type Solari or FV from Gundam Requiem for Vengeance off of Netflix. Once again, if you want to see the build of this kit, I did that already. And if you do want one of your own, there is a link down there in the description. I got mine right here through those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. But yeah, let's get right on into the review. So jumping on into the aesthetics, and this might just be the most detailed high grade, if not 144th scale Zaku around. This right here is a kit with a lot of detail, even more molded in detail, and a whole lot of chunk to just the overall design and the amount of plastic in it. Now I did do a full build video of this, which you can check out, but since that I did do a little bit more. I did panel line this, I used the pour type panel liners, you just put them against the plastic and they'll fill it in for you which is really handy with a kit like this that is so so detailed and then I did use some of the decals. Now the decals that are included in here are a little bit on the unusual side especially for high grades. They're like the old school real grade style that go over a full area pretty much like what we would have seen with the high grade Gundam EX but this is definitely a whole lot more of a curvier mobile suit than the EX so some of these are a little bit on the problematic side. For example, when it comes to the decals for up on the shoulders, these will not fit. These are almost a rectangular decal for on a multifaceted four-faced surface. So in order to make these fit, you will actually have to cut little lines in the side of them like what I'm doing right here. Otherwise, they will not lie flat. That's the same for the front and the back. These were the only ones that I found you needed to do that on. The rest stick on in kind of unusual ways. The ones for on the feet, these actually come as multiple stickers, so you put them on piece by piece by piece by piece by piece, so no cutting required. They are fitted quite well. And there are some then for on the front skirting armor, which I believe are, I think the best word for it is, diabolically bad. We also have one for the chest as well, and this fits nicely. Overall, really good, except for the ones on the skirts. But yeah, once all of that is done, this right here is what we get. And this is, like I said, a really detailed, over-the-top, new interpretation of the classic mobile suit that is the Zaku. Or should I say, Zaku 2. So there we go, this is what we get once this is put together, with a little bit of panel lining and the included decals. Now the included decals are definitely a little bit more impressive than I thought they would be, because just like we saw with the EX, they are fitted to the area for the most part. This one did need to be sliced out a little bit, this one is just cut very perfectly but we do have a couple of those kind of classic ones that have that big rectangle around them not the most impressive and the least impressive aspect are these ones right here they just do not work on this kind of surface and plastic at all actually you can see the imperfections in the actual stickers more than you can actually see the printed little bit of black detail on them for example that right there is what a skirt would look like without them and honestly it looks a damn sight better so if you are going to use the decals i recommend selective use only. In usual Zaku kind of way, this right here is not as detailed as what we would have seen with the high grade Gundam EX. It's definitely a simpler kit, especially I guess that's a good thing if you're going to be building multiples of them to represent the different units in the show. So that does mean it's just one color of everything. So one color of the reddish color, one color of the brownie mustard, one color of the nice off wide but we do have two kind of tones really when it does come to the bluish gray aspects of the armor and the joint sections those are colors separated out nicely and we also have a lot of beautiful piping that's been done so well in this kit and just like we saw with the ex there's greebles on greebles on greebles panel lines all over the place and this is incredibly incredibly detailed everywhere you look you'll find something nice so if you want to battle damage and weather this up, it's the perfect kind of design to do it with because of all that little detail there to get some crap, rust, oil, and all that sort of schmutz into. So it will look great with that sort of style. There are some nice aspects on this kit, kind of like the way some of the gray comes from underneath, especially right here, that's exceptionally nice right there. And over here on this shoulder shield, we do have these gray segments coming in from underneath. Besides that though, there isn't really a whole lot of unique things really happening on this. The design of course is completely unique for a Zaku, but when it comes to anything, there's nothing like clear parts, UV parts, anything like that. The eye mono eye segment can move around, so if you just pop off the head, you can see we do have a little bit of a switch here. We can just move to the side like so to have it looking off that direction and move off to that side right there. Now it is a little bit sad that they just went for 
a standard pink sticker. This right here doesn't really catch the light per se, and I don't think it, well, reacts to UV, but we might as well find out. So there it is with no UV, and there it is with UV. So as far as I can see, no, no reaction. So it's just kind of a extremely boring sticker. As for the model kit sins, that of course being knobs, seams, and molds, this kit isn't so bad either. The worst problem probably would be those seams in the front aspects of the forearm armors. But besides that and various other parts, they're nicely amalgamated into the armor design. I see another little bit of one up on the top of its shield. And the only real problematic mold line I see is up in the bicep areas, especially towards the back. When it comes to knobs, I just double snip this and they're not really all that obvious. Overall, quite good. So next up then is the full 360 degree spin so you can see absolutely every angle and aspect of this kit for yourself. Now I absolutely love what they did with the Zaku right here. When I actually saw the original design I thought it did look a little bit clunky, a little bit awkward. But once I've actually seen it in model kit form, this does look incredible. Now I'm a little bit sad that I don't actually keep any high grade or 144 scale Zaku's anywhere nearby to actually compare it to. But I do feel like this will fit in ever so nicely, especially with the mobile suit, the Origin versions. Sure, it does have a lot more exterior detail, a lot more extra greebles, a lot more heavier aspects, especially in the upper body, but it all really does work out very nicely, model kit wise, in the end. So next up then onto the size comparison and there it is side by side with the Oryx 78 one the Granddaddy Gundam, the high grade here on the left, the real grade here on the right, so you can use that to get a general size of what this is like in universe. So as you can see it's about standardish head height, but it's good and chunky. Beside another couple of Gundams, that is the high grade Gundam Mark II and the high grade Gundam EX, this one right here from the exact same show, Requiem for Vengeance. Beside a couple of random other Gundams from other series being Gundam Ariel on the left, Barabatos on the right, and shifting it over ever so slightly to pop it down beside the last high grade to come out which is the absolute unit, the Black Knight Karura. When it comes to the accessories inside of the box with the high grade Solari Zaku 2, you don't really get a whole lot of stuff, just the essentials. That is the Zaku machine gun, Heat Hawk, an optional two more hands, that is a holding hand for the machine gun, a widespread left hand, and then we've got some other stuff including some, what I can only assume are grenades from the sides of the legs, and then we have two adapters, one for the machine gun, one for an action base. So first up in here we do have the Zaku machine gun and I've left the hand attached onto it because this is a specific hand for using with this weapon and this weapon only. It's a nice hand by the way, very nicely sculpted. The rest of the Zaku machine gun's nice too. Side to side moving sight right here and a side to side moving handle right here which also, if I'm not mistaken, seems to have a little bit of a trigger on it. Again, this attached the usual way, just pop off the hand like so. Pop in the hand holding the machine gun in usual kind of Zaku kind of way. It has to go on the inside of the arm because of the big old stock section, which I always assume just kind of braces against the chest or goes in under the arm or something. It never really ever fully has made sense to me. So getting the Zaku machine gun attached is super simple. If it's already in the hand, you just pop out the old hand and pop this one in just like this. Just for the sake of trying this out, I decided to use the other hand as well for that two-handed grip. This is easy enough to do, disassemble the other hand, close it on the handle just like so, and getting into a pose with both hands holding onto the weapon is actually easier than I expected it to be. So yeah, the stock does kind of clamp in under the mech armpit, and this is what you get. It looks really great in a pose, I did a couple of poses, and overall, so far so good. Okay, so next up going to try and get this into its stowed away position, so remove the rifle just like so, we're going to be getting this hand off it like that. We have this little adapter segment which just clips in under just like so, and that then just attaches into the little slot on the back like this, so it's held nicely and securely in position. Also, I will mention, I totally forgot about this little extra hand right here. This one you can actually use with the secondary handle on the Zaku machine gun so you don't actually have to pop it into a hand, which might actually be a little bit easier, honestly. Anyway, the next piece of equipment we have in here is the Heat Hawk. Now, this is obviously it in its deactivated stage because we don't have any kind of color on this little segment right here. If you take a quick peek in the instructions, this is glowing orange, so there is no option here for using with this, sadly. It would be nice if we actually had a removable 
actual heated section you could attach on or remove this bit, but you are stuck with this. If you do want an active version, you will have to paint it. Getting this into the hand is super simple. You just slide it on in just like so, and it holds on nicely. And there's a quick example of what it will look like in a pose, rushing in, lunging, ready to attack. So it holds on properly, does what it needs to do, but it is an extremely simple weapon. But again, what more do you want from a heat hawk? When it comes to storing this away, it's exactly the same as with the machine gun. Pop it out of the hand, you're going to have to move the machine gun out of the way around back so there is no side skirting storage for this like the old school Zakus. This actually attaches into the exact same spot in the exact same way and once again, holds on well. Lastly then in here we've got this Yokuma Bobber right here which I can only assume, it doesn't say in the instructions what it is, so I can only assume it's some kind of Zaku grenade or something similar. At the same time it kind of looks like a little bit like a smoke launcher but again have no idea. This just attaches into the little hole on the side of the leg just like so. That is it. Super simple. So finally now going on to the articulation and first off the usual comment on the build. This is so solid it is crazy. This does not move at all and it's decently heavy too. This is a kit that's actually as solid as it looks and it holds every pose very well and even the like the joints are good and robust which is always a very important thing anyway from the head down. So a giggity 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 goo neck. There it is all the way up all the way down not too bad. Side to side will bring it all the way around and there's that little bit of tilt. That right there is the inside of the shoulder joint. It moves forward at that point. It does not move back. Ball joint attachment. The big question for me here now is, does this actually work with the seed action frame? No, it doesn't. That's fucking stupid. Seriously, hugely missed opportunity right there. Anyway, we have that little bit of a joint in there as well. So the arm raises up and that's about as far as it goes. We do have the full spin in there as well. Shoulder armor moves, but only ever so slightly due to a ball joint in there. Full upper arm rotation, extremely nice double jointed bend at the elbow, and standard regular ball joint wrist. Not much in here when it comes to an ab crunch, and at that it's a little bit on the awkward side. So there it is already kind of engaged, as you can see, I'll pop it off so you can get a better idea. And what this is, is a ball joint forward which allows for this. Now I find when this actually does move, it's so tightly in there that it actually gets stuck. So for me now, this will not move forward again. So that is ever so slightly awkward. Can I push forward and... No, it just doesn't work anymore. So all we're really getting there is the rock of the ball joint. So not a whole lot. The front skirting armors move up just like so. There is an extra nice joint right in here via C-clip, which allows this to move out away from the body. So it does not get in the way while moving. Side skirts are very nicely designed, move up just like so. Butt flap is completely blocked. So that does mean when it comes to kicks, very nice to the front. It does have a nice dropping waist in there so you can get even more out of that kick to the front. Not too much though to the back, it is very blocked. Bring it up to the top, you can get it out a little bit more. And as for the splits, no bother whatsoever, especially when in the lower position. Full spin at the upper leg, decent but not amazing bend at the knee. Two points though, which is nice and a little bit of armor on the knee right there which moves with the central joint. Slapping the leg now on the ground to check out that functional movement at the ankle. Now I will mention this is very interesting. The armor does kind of slot in there. You can move that out of the way and in like so. And when you have that out, you're actually able to bring the leg up away from itself like this. So you can get that, well, falling off. So you can get a little bit to the front. Not really a whole lot to the front. There it is out of the back, so decent enough. And there is the side to side. So as you can see, it's a little bit limited at the knee and the ankles. So busting into the usual pose and this is one of those kits where what you get is actually less than the sum of its parts and in the end, it's a little bit on the awkward side, especially in the legs. This right here is what I got in the end. Now, I tried to do the pose that I normally do while keeping at least one flat surface of the feet on the ground. Sure, you could kind of kick it out like that to kind of get it a little bit better, but there is no ankle articulation enough to get that flat onto the ground. So by default, it's kind of just stuck in that. Overall, a little bit awkward and a little bit cumbersome, but hey, at the end of the day, isn't that exactly what a Zaku is? So anyway, that right there is it for the review of the high-grade Zaku 2 F-Type Solari from Requiem for Vengeance. Now, I did kind of deliberate a bit on this. I was stuck between gold tier and platinum tier. It loses some points, obviously, because the articulation isn't really the greatest, and there's not a lot of equipment inside of the box. But the thing is, that's the equipment the unit had, 
and the articulation is par for the mobile suit in general, so that means I had to go with platinum tier. Overall, when it comes to the aesthetics, this is absolutely gorgeous. So much panel lining to work with. These stickers are unique, some of them fantastic, some of them not so great, but those are an optional extra. Overall though, this is one stupefying looking Zaku. It's big, it's hefty, the color separation is off the charts, and it just looks so good. When it comes to the accessories, these are a little bit on the dull side. The Zaku machine gun is nice, but besides that, everything in here is very generic and not too exciting. Finally then, when it comes to the articulation, it is a little bit on the limited side, but this is a Zaku 2, a very, when it comes to the Universal Century, rudimentary mobile suit. So it's not going to be pulling off crazy over-the-top poses, so it does what it needs to do and no more. Sure, the legs are a little bit limited to some degree, but you can still get absolutely fantastic poses out of it, and it is so rock-solid and amazing feeling that it just gets points for that too. Anyway, Platinum Tier, fantastic. And as usual, I will drop a link down there in the description. So thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. Once again, I kind of finished this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys for watching my videos. That makes absolutely everything on here possible. If you don't want to support more interesting videos or just to improve the overall quality of the channel, you can help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon. Patreon is really what does fund any and all improvements quality-wise to this channel. So a special shout out to Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Joe, RG59061, Shadowwolf179, Van Fon, and Scotty Thomas. Link to join the Patreon and the Discord down there in the description.